Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And today we'll finish the mini series I started two videos ago with M83. Uh, so this, I guess this makes this uh, video M85 where we started to look into the SMF subsystem of MBS and ZOS. SMF stands as we've seen for systems management facility it's a system that records everything that happens within the operating system and all the job activity within the operating system. So whenever uh, a file is opened, whenever a job is launched, whenever a step is finished, whenever a user logs in, whatever happens is recorded in variable length records on a vSAM database. And we've seen that there is always at least two databases, sometimes three, that switch so that when one fills up, the operator has a time to dump the contents of the old um, vSAM database into a collection data set. And, um, and while it's recording on a, on a, on a second data set, uh, the, you have time to dump the contents and, and then when the other one fills up, it switches back to the empty one and so on. So SMF is really at the core, it's really about workflow. Um, in a production environment, especially where mainframes are being used, as we know, mainframes are used mostly for um, or in, in, in big environments such as banks, credit card processing companies, insurance companies, government, where security is very important and traceability is very important and living an audit trail is very important. So SMF is of very primary importance in those environment environments because it allows um, if a faultless recording of everything that happened in the system and that's why the the workflow is really important so that there's no gaps in recording on the system because at any given moment on a mainframe it's not unusual to have hundreds of thousands of transactions a second up to millions of transactions per second sometimes and so when this much happens on a on a computer sometimes 24 7 it's important of course to record everything and that's why the workflow for dumping the SMF vSAN data sets into recording uh, into dumping data sets and then and then running reports against them is so important so the takeaway here is that the workflow is really the main thing when it comes to SMF now most people on the Moshix mainframe channel um, run MVS and of course when we run MVS the, almost by definition it's not a production environment it's a, st a studying environment, it's a learning environment where people uh, study how things work. And I would say that because of that reason, SMF is probably less important for the viewers of the Moshix mainframe channel. However, um, there is some viewers of the channel that actually work in mainframe environments and use this channel to study how to do things in their shop. And so uh, in this uh, last installment of the mini series and the third installment we're going to look at ZOS because that's where people probably run SMF in a production environment and that's where you want to know how things work so let's get to uh, work with with the mainframe a little bit after so much introductory talking uh, what I've done is and I promised that in the last video in M84 is I did um, a little bit of programming a lot of typing and a lot of testing and that's why I actually didn't record all those sessions because that would have been very very long uh, which is what I like to do sometimes I record while I program and then play back at an accelerated pace and then people can see how these things are being developed but um, I didn't do it for this because it's just way too much but what I want to show in this video is several things that I've that I've created um, so a lot of this actually comes from old mainframe magazines that uh, I found uh, at a garage sale uh, last year and finally I've gotten around to reading them and uh, unfortunately I only have them on paper so a lot of the stuff had to be typed in again and that's all code from I would say from the mid 80s and so some changes had to be um, put in to make it work on modern systems but I got it to work. So what you've seen is that if we look, uh, if you go to the Moshix 
repository on GitHub. So you just type here github.com slash moshix and you go to the MBS repository, you'll see that I have a whole bunch of SMF related files. They're all called SMF. And those are files uh, that, that, that work with the workflow that I just described before. So uh, the first step of every SMF is of course always to dump. And, um, and I have an SMF dumping. Where is it? Okay, um, so here is the data set. We've seen this in the previous video. Uh, what you're going to do is first, you always take it out from from the production, from the from the data set um, that SMF is recording to. You take it out of there and you dump it into a collection data set, which I call here uh, Moshix SMF Dump 2. So when I run this job, it takes everything that it finds in those in in this in this. Um, database vsum database and puts it in there and this you find here it's called smf dump okay you can see here same thing and and then once we have that um where is it uh, then we come to the area once we have the collection data set we we can start to produce reports we've seen that on ZOS, we have very often we have DF sort, which is an IBM price product, and it's called the program itself, the execute the load module is called ICE tool. And we can use that, it's a sort program, but it has its own language as you can see here. But we can use that to very quickly produce reports um, such as this one. So if I run this right now, let's see what comes out. Um, I for ice tool. Let's run this. Oh, there is a problem. So we should be fine with this. Why is this not working? So let's. Oh, I guess the problem is I don't have a collection. Let's let's run this to create first of all dump job six five two one has an error. Let's go find out what the problem is. Uh, what is the problem? Duplicate data set name on volume. Okay, so it already exists. And by the way, whenever you have the problem that you need to, you know, obviously the, the right thing to do would be in, to put in an additional step. Um, so let's see how we do that. Um, an additional step to first delete a data set that you create. So you don't have a JCL errors because the, because the data set already exists. So let's do this here on this example. Let's do delete exec program ID cams. Let's just close this window. So less distraction. So um, what we're going to do is um, put in the language. Oops, I actually have it here. So, and now we say delete motion SMF dump two. And this now, what we'll do is invoke ID cams to delete this file. We can also, by the way, delete members within the PDS if this is what we want. And then uh, the, the nice thing about using this method is, and we should, you should really always do that this way, is that uh, it tries to delete something that you're creating here. If it doesn't exist, then of course the condition code will be set uh, to an error but um, but to uh, get around this you can say then set max condition code to zero just in case this data set isn't actually around so this way this will JCL will always work so um, let's do this let's run it and it went through this time so okay 
so you can see here that um, we were able to copy all these records it's um, how many records 3791 records so we were we're still in the workflow so this would be the first step dumping and then once we dump we can now um, we can now start to produce re reports such as this one which we saw in the previous video um, let's just run it against smf dump 2 Oop. and let's see and this of course uses ice tool we could also use rex um, or COBOL or PO1. All it really is is just reading a variable length record from one place, from this place, and then understanding the record structure and then and then putting it in a report. Now the good thing about using iStool is that there's there's no need to write a whole program around it. You could just say uh, go through the sort um, as you go through the through this dump collection data set. Uh, print out the records you find uh, and it's much simpler than writing in PL1 you would have to write uh, procedure options main and then close it and open the file and define the file in this in the JCL and then open it and and, and have a table uh, of the record structure and for every new report that you produce you would have to change the program so the good thing about this uh, by using uh, sort is that you don't actually have to write a whole program around it but if there is something that you use all the time let's say that management in a production environment wanted to have a report about something or the auditors you would you could also write a program because it's always going to be the same and then maybe you could also uh, make it a little fancier and add stuff and start to work also on the fields maybe multiply or add some fields up which you can also do with ice tool by the way with df sort but maybe you would have more opportunity to transform the data if you use your own program so let's run this job 6523 as you can see here maximum condition code zero let's go look at the output and now i'm in uh, sdsf which i really like it's something that we miss of course in mbs by the way i'm working here on the university of leipzig uh, system they have very graciously granted me a login and uh, thank you very much university of leipzig so we this is the report that we produced and so there's actually no data in this in relevant data in this um, in this database that concerns what we want to put out but but you can see here we produce a report very easily now um, this we already did in the previous video the stuff that I worked on in the last couple of weeks is actually this so I wrote two reports which are also based on ice tool but there are a lot more, uh, and by the way, I, I just should uh, uh, be precise here in the language. I didn't actually write most of this. I did, I did change it and did extend it a little bit. I took it, um, I wrote, I typed it in from an old mainframe uh, magazine that I found from, from the 80s. Um, but uh, so, and I made some changes here. But this is a very extensive report. What we're trying to do here is I've look at all the data let's assume we have a use case where we want to know who has um, deleted or created data sets or changed data sets in the system so how we would do this first of all we would have to know which record type we're looking at so if we go and find out from this back sys smf type if you search like this you come here and you find out that record 65 is delete activity so if you want to have a report about who deleted vsan data sets we could uh, run this report so let's say that we want to know if anybody deleted anything let's say we have a policy in place that no data sets are now to be deleted in production they can only be changed but not deleted so we could now um, produce a weekly report a monthly report or an ad hoc report when we s maybe suspect that somebody deleted something and we want to know who did it we could run this report and find out who did what on the system um, so far we can do that here why don't we run this report and you get an idea and then I'll once we run this report and we're going to look how this is actually written job 6524 ended with maximum condition code zero which we 
actually went well. Um, let's go look at this again. Okay, and we have now two reports. And so no catalog were deleted on the system since I collected this data. So no deletion whatsoever. That I guess would be a good thing if this is what the company wants. So here we could put in a company name here. And let's take this one. I put in a Moshix channel, ICF catalog activity, also no deletion. So this is one is for record type 65, one is for 66. Let's go check what 66 is. Record type 66 is alter. So if somebody had changed a, um, a vSAM structure, we would get a report about it here. If, and that's the big if, that's why workflow is so important. If we had collected all the SMF data and dumped it without ever skipping a single record. So the workflow here is really important that we, as soon as, a, as one vSAM data set fills up, we have to go and um, and dump it immediately before the other one fills up and it switches back over again. So uh, just to be sure, uh, I want to show here called IMON, the amazing IMON monitor by Greg Price. If you go into M, you will see that it's telling us that this system here is recording on three um, VSAM data sets. Um, one, the one that's active, it tells, tells us which one is active, is now right now 74% full. Once this one fill, fills up, it will probably switch to number three once this and then we have time to dump this one and once so in a production environment you want to have three because then you have a little bit more time to dump the data sets before they fill up or you could also have four whatever the the workflow is but this is an indication of workflow you need to have a procedure in place to dump this data sets so if if you have a faultless recording of all the data that's uh, being collected by smf um then you can um, produce these reports and know with certainty who did what. And again, uh, this is all about process, really. There's not much that that much technology here or uh, um, sorcery in making this work. So, how does this report uh, work? So, number one, um, we uh, we run the um, iStool and we give it some symbolic names so to make this really um, easy to program what we do is uh, the, the original programmer of this separated between the logic the report that you want to build and the um, and and easy to remember symbolic names for all the data in the records and they did that by, I don't remember the name of the programmer. I would have to go look at the computer magazine. Um, by separating between SMF headers and then SMF 65 uh, record structure and SMF type 66 record structure. So let's go look at them. Here's the header. Okay, so here we see this is the, this, the record descriptor. And um, and so basically the binary structure of the SMF record header is now described here in symbolic uh, with a symbolic variable, which I still can then use when it produces the report. And by the way, I'm going to put all of this on the on the MBS GitHub repository so you can use all of that. This works. Um, it took me quite a while to get it to work because I had to go look up um, some of the SMF a record type structure some stuff was added so it wasn't really compatible um, as it was in the magazine anymore but now let's look at this so here is a description of the of the entire 65 record um, type record so this is exactly how the record is built if we go through all this we will have mapped the entire record and give this all a symbolic name so that we can then use it in the report maker 
to just put in the data that we need to put out. And there's some documentation here. IBM has excellent documentation. That's, I think, 50% of the success of the mainframe is due to the excellent documentation IBM has always had. Uh, it's come down a little bit in recent years, where, for instance, I've found that the principle of operation um, of the of the Z architecture now and then is missing a few items that are actually in the implementation of the architecture. But he, he, it's it's certainly far up, far and beyond anything else that exists in a computing world. And of course, when you have environments that process billions of transactions a day, documentation is key. And so here um, you can find the documentation that describes this record. And then we give each um, each thing we give here a uh, each subfield of the record we give a a name, um, and then whatever the contents can be are also described, so that we we when we use the report maker then this one we can just refer to the. Um, to the, uh, as you can see here, to the, uh, ah, can I say, the, um, the symbolic table. Okay, so as you can see, we can say exactly here, we can refer to all these subfields and makes the program here a lot easier to look at and also easier to program and change. So I'm going to make this all available um, on the MVS repository on GitHub, the Moshix repository on GitHub, and um, and then you can you can play with that. So that's a great way to do it. Um, then there's also you can also do this all with Rex, which I I wrote something very small to do this with Rex, um, but it's there's really nothing magic there. I thought that using IDF sort with uh, symbolic uh, tables is, uh, is, is a more interesting thing to show in this video. Uh, there's another tool here which works with the 66 uh, record. So let's run this. Do we have dump two? Yeah. 6525, maximum condition code zero. And let's look. Came out. ICF catalog activity. No activity whatsoever. This is a test system, so not much happening. Um, other than me, I don't think anybody else is usually logged in. But um, that's how you would um, you would work with SMF. So first you dump, and you have a workflow to make sure you dump everything in a collection data set. A lot of people actually put it on tape because in a very busy system there would be billions of records. So um, having a workflow that can store a lot of data is is really important here. Once you have it there, you can then proceed to produce the reports you need to produce, either with Ice Tool, which is a price feature of uh, ZOS or with any other language. Um, so this is about it. I think that um, we have seen how this works. The, the understanding is that uh, records, each record is different. And so you would have to have a table like this for each record type. So 66, this is the table for 66. If you wanted to do something, let's say with, um, I don't know, um, 15 maybe so yeah 15 is is data set non BSAN data set access oh actually here it says it here um, so you would have to go and read how the SMF type 15 record is structured which you have here and then write a table to do this as you can see here uh, this is also how the fields are being called uh, by the way, if we look at 66, we should see so many of the same field names. So let's do that. 66. So here, J and M. As you can see here, this is the same record. And the, we know it's an offset 50. And in decimal, 
and the length is eight bytes. Um, and this is job name, the job log identification consists of the job name, time and date that the reader recognized the job card. If a system that caused the record to be written, the job name and user identification contains blanks and the time and date field contains zero. So you can see here, every field has, a, has, a, has its own meaning. And so writing all this in PL1 or COBOL or REX just implies a lot of knowledge inside the algorithm. And that's why just sorting it with the ICE tool and printing it out is, uh, is a much quicker way to do it. Um, as you can see here, all these subfields here are there. So we have RDT, you have UID, user identification field. So we know which user did anything. So we map the whole record. And you would see that you will see that in production uh, shops where Zeos is used in production, very often you would have uh, somebody write this uh, symbolic tables for the most uh, often used SMF types that they have to report on. So 15, I would think, is one. Right? And it's really not that difficult to write something like this, right? We can say position. Um, we could we could just take this as a template and write a table for this record. Um, very simple to do. It's just work. I mean, it's it's just it, it, there's nothing there's nothing magic about it. Uh, we could say about job termination, so we could produce a report about all the jobs that uh, started, job initiation, um, anything else that we want to do. Now, so we looked at this SMF. Now, one other use of SMF that I mentioned is that SMF is actually used by IBM to send the rent charges every month for the usage of ZOS because ZOS you can you cannot buy a perpetual license for it you can only rent it from IBM and how do they charge they charge by use they look at any window the top the any four hour time window where there was peak usage they will they will take that and price the month for it and and to be able to do that you need to send your SMF record so SMF has to be enabled by contract uh, to be able to um, allow IBM to invoice the shop so that's why SMF is always running in a production environment uh, and so that's the second use the third use is for RMF RMF is a part of of ZOS that deals with resource measurement um, and there is, uh, what, what this is, is that a lot of the records that go into SMF are actually about uh, operating system activity. And if you use this uh, and, and, and relate it to time, to a timeline, then you can understand what is going on in the system and where the resources are being used. So. Um, there is usually an area which I think I don't have access to in this system called RMF. Um, yeah, I don't I don't have access to it. But um, there is um, a system that people are have a system program privileges. They can access RMF and then produce reports about system activity so that they can see what's going on. Of course, a lot of that we already have from. Uh, Imon, of which I have a video, which you can search in the Moshix Mainframe channel for, that shows you how to install it. Everybody can install it. You don't need to be a system programmer to install it. But uh, you can already monitor what's going on in the system, but this is a real-time monitoring. And RMF is a batch kind of monitoring so that uh, you can report on the performance over time. And so for RMF, you need SMF enabled and you need to re read through SMF uh, dumps. And um, so let's see if we can um, see here. There's an IBM manual, of course, for it's called resource measurement facility. And let's see. As you can see here, obtaining SMF records, very important. Here you have um, a very simple assembler program that reads RMF data through SMF and then produces a report about resource measurement. So the idea of RMF is to allow people to, uh, to see where there is a resource contention 
and how to improve the performance of the system. So again, this is a production environment uh, related system. RMF and SMF are really very much have to do with running stuff in production. So people who just want to learn or run test environments, um, RMF and SMF are of secondary importance. Um, so there are several ways to do that. And let's see if we can find RMF report example on the web. Mm. Let's see what they show here. Capturing an RMF or collective report. Nothing shows up. Yeah, the IBM website has, is really a struggle sometimes. So here's, here's a, a, share, a whole introduction to this topic. The SHARE website, which is a website um, by the users, run by the users and with the cooperation of IBM, of, M, of uh, mainframe users, of, of um, IBM mainframe users. And so there they, they do, I think twice a year, they have meetings somewhere in the US. There's an equivalent in Europe called Guide, uh, which I also should look at if you reside in Europe. And there they have all kinds of workshops. I mean, it's, there's so much to learn when you go there. I have I used to go to share back in the 80s. I haven't been in the last 30 years or so. But I always look at um, the proceeds of the of the meetings of the share meetings and it's up to the original speaker or uh, author of these slides if they want to share them or not but usually they do and you can learn a lot by just looking at the slides so smf we already looked into smf records how they're structured cpu usage is type 30 and data set activity 4292 system resource manager decisions um, or usually workload balancing related that will be 99 so this we already seen how these are where it's written how to export out of it we've already seen all of that um, so interval recording right so got specific intervals yeah all this we've already seen now Dumping, we have already seen how to dump. We just did that. That's the dumping program. Activity report, which we've seen how to do. And then RMF, which is now performance data, which reads from SMF and creates reports relating to. Uh, so we could, for instance, use this now to see if we can create a report so why don't we go and rmf rep and copy this here and now we can make use of a thing that I showed I was showing in a previous video which is my ISPF macro that uh, I have a macro that produces a job card so I just type JC macro boom and we have a rep um, a job card produced for us the only thing I want to add here maybe is message class a uh, message level okay so let's see what it says here about, about this thing. And let's take mm, SMF matrix, SMF dump two as the input. And let's try to run this. So job six five two six has a minor error and let's go look at it it didn't find any yeah we don't have enough we don't have enough uh, information uh, we could try to read directly from the 
from the collection data set. Let's see if this works. Um, what was it called again? Well, uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to disturb the system. But uh, so there's we in in the dump that we produce. We don't have any of these records. Uh, maybe they're not turned on in this test environment. But this is a very simple program to now report on uh, on CPU activity and other stuff. As you can see here, there, there is an, a different program here called this is the RMF uh, reporting tool. You can see here RMF and you can easily uh, create reports by uh, referring to dumps that you created. So this will be the last step of the SMF cycle. So one is, of course, for reporting activity, um, which you need to call a dump uh, into collection data sets. Then you can create reports uh, with either ISO or your own favorite language. Then it's used for IBM's pricing of uh, their components. And it can also be used for the resource measurement and performance uh, measurement and tuning of your system by using the RMF uh, report generator that's included with ZOS. So uh, unfortunately, I don't have a production environment. And as I said, all these things are really production related. Uh, that's why I don't have uh, much st stuff to show here because I don't, I don't have access to a real production environment. Of course, I don't have I don't own a bank or a credit card company or insurance, and I'm certainly not a government. So, uh, make this a little bit more beautiful here. And this last two lines, and now it looks a lot better. Okay, so uh, if you run production workload, you've, you're Welcome to download all of this. I'm going to put all of these things in in uh, in my MBS repository on GitHub, so you can uh, copy those and start working with them. You're certainly welcome to do that. Um, and I hope you learned something. This concludes our mini series on SMF, and uh, I'll see you soon around again on this channel. If you, by the way, if you have any questions, please uh, write some comments in the in, in this description below this video um, press and thumbs up button if you like this particular video and subscribe to the Moshik's mainframe channel if you have not subscribed yet thank you very much goodbye